How are you guys doing? Hey, how are you doing? Doing good. Come on <laughs> in. Welcome to the homestead. <laughs> oh, this is awesome. My name's Thomas. I'm a park historic interpreter here. So you guys have any questions, feel free to ask. All the structures that we have here on the homestead are reproductions, but they are based off our own research and documentation from the time period. So we feel very confident that if the Crockett's were to come back today, they feel <laughs> very much at home. But the Crockett settled in this area in the early 1780s. It was John and Rebecca Crockett. They had four children with them. David wasn't born yet. They get a homestead up and established. They settle as tenant farmers. So they work the land for Colonel Gillespie who owns it. So a large portion of the crops they grow go to him essentially to pay for it so they can stay here on this land. But while in the area, David's father, John, served as a local magistrate, um, served on juries, also thought to have been a land speculator, so he'd go out and report whether the land was good, bad, and things like that. Okay. But um, they got a homestead established, and then August 17th, 1776 rolls around, out pops David, and he's number five in the bunch. He was born in 76? 1786. Uh, 86, oh, 86, okay. Yeah. Yep, August 17th, 1786. So he's number five in the bunch, and that bunch keeps growing. So by the time David is six years old, when they leave this area, he is one of nine children. Ooh. Yep. By the time he died, uh, he was the father of eight, two of whom were stepchildren. He's often quoted to say that he was better at increasing his family than his fortune. <laughs> <laughs> you guys have any questions about anything? Does it get really hot in here with that fire going? <laughs> it's, yeah, it's actually not too, too bad. Um, you know, they would have had a fire going whether it was 10 degrees or 110 degrees. Really? Yeah. So we're going to be huh. doing all your cooking, boiling water, you know, things like that. During the winter time, it gets pretty cozy, but, you know, during the summer months, if we don't have a fire going in here, it's normally a couple degrees cooler in here than outside. During the winter time, it's normally a few degrees warmer. So. Have you ever been across anybody who doesn't know what the Alamo is? <laughs> uh, a couple people. Um, it is it is rare. It is rare. Um, mainly when we have um, maybe people from uh, from out of the country that come and stop by. They may yeah. not know what the Alamo is, but most of the people I talk to, they do. She's asking because a friend of ours. That's who, going into the military. <laughs> who just, just joined the military. Young man, you know. Just joined the military and he's serving in San Antonio. And we said, oh, you're going to get to see the Alamo. And he said, what's the Alamo? <laughs> <laughs> and we're like, you know, Davy Crockett, Daniel Boone, and he was like, <laughs> I don't think he. Who are those guys? Yeah, I was like, oh no, not good statement about the education nowadays. <laughs> So how did you get involved with the Historical Society here? So um, I've always been a big fan of history, this time period in particular. Um, when I got done uh, with college, um, I saw they had an opening here, so I applied. Um, and then I did, um, I was with AmeriCorps for a year, so I was helping out the park here, and I just started a, a full-time position here at the park doing uh, interpreting. So. Yeah. So how did your mom feel when you said, I'm done with college, now I'm going to go live in a little log cabin in the woods? She was, uh, she was pretty <laughs> supportive. It wasn't, wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. <laughs> I'm just joking. <laughs> That's pretty neat. Do you mind if we share this on YouTube? Oh, no, go right Oh, ahead. awesome. Appreciate it.